Hi, this is Chris Hendon with OPT. We're now on part number five of our processing with Maxim DL. And this is actually going to be sort of a dual video. It's part five of the Maxim DL series. It's actually going to be part of the series on how to do layer masking and aligning frames from different shoots or at different image scales. We have to start the process in Maxim DL and we're actually going to move into Photoshop in a second video for the second part of the process. So for now, what I'm actually gonna do that we haven't covered in earlier videos is how to use Maxim DL's automated processes for actually discovering calibration files. Now I have some data I've shot of the Orion Nebula some long exposures which get the fainter parts of the nebula as well as some shorter parts that get the trapezium which is typically blown out in long exposures so if i actually open the file you can actually see i have a long exposure here where the faint part of the nebula is visible but the brighter part even if i drag this all the way to the right is completely clipped so that's unusable data, we've overexposed it. It's one of the unfortunate things that happens with objects with a wide range of brightnesses. If I instead go and look at one of my short files here, now this image is only 30 seconds long instead of 15 minutes. Now, you see if I drag the white part over, we actually have detail all the way down to being able to split the four stars in the center. So very wide range of brightnesses. Unfortunately, if you want to catch the fainter parts of the nebula, some objects like the Orion Nebula, which is up very prominent in the winter sky, you can't do all at once. Now, I took the lazy way out when I shot this image. I actually had Maxim DL automatically subtract the dark frames from it. But what I need to show you is how to apply a flat. Now, we've done a video on flats that you can check our YouTube channel but uh, this is actually gonna show how Maxim can auto-generate uh, the information. So if you go to process, they have what's called a calibration wizard. So if you have captured all of your information in one folder, this can actually grab the files and create the master calibration files for you. So if you click on this, we have the information here that'll talk about the different types of frames, bias, dark, and flat. If we hit next, you select the directory here. I've saved them under the F drive, the M42 color folder. Hit OK. If you hit next, you can see that it found nine files, loaded them. If I hit view calibration details and finish, it now loads the master flat files that were saved in that same folder. So I have a different flat here for my blue, my green, and my red. So it'll know that it's to be applied to specific files there. So if I open up any one of my images here, you can see that as we drag this over, the image is a little bit darker in the corners than it is in the center. It's not a whole lot, but when you're applying the color, it can be distracting to have this difference. So if I go to process calibrate, it actually corrects that so that the image is smooth all the way to the edge. But rather than having to do this on each image individually, Maxim offers a really easy way to handle this. Since we've already set the calibration through the calibration wizard, if you just go to process stack, click the auto calibrate button, you can actually add a folder that's already previously been saved, hit okay, It'll actually look at all the files here and we'll go ahead and include them. Now it's going to make some mistakes here because it's actually going to add the flats in there by themselves. So this actually has the flats. So I want to actually refuse to look at this one and I don't want this right here. So I have red, green, and blue. So if you actually look at these, we can see the files found in each. Now I only had three reds, two greens, and two blues. So what we're going to have to do here is click align auto star matching. And we can't do a median because I only have two files. We need three. So if you set it to average and hit go, what it's doing is looking at all of the files, calibrating them, aligning them, and color converting them. 
So right there, we've created a full color image without you having to do as much work. Now for most files, if you have enough exposure and enough frames, that can be all you need to do. So there, we have created our long exposure stack. What we're gonna do now though, is grab the trapezium files, which I showed you earlier. We have to remove all of these. We now have to choose the trapezium folder where I've saved the other images. Now, because these exposures are so short, the flat frames typically don't calibrate correctly, but we'll leave auto calibrate on just in case. It may throw an error at us, but that's okay. So if I go here, I can see I have two short trapezium images for each filter. If I go to combine, I do an average and I hit go. This will combine these into the trapezium data. Now, again, it's always best to use either a median or a sigma clip, but to do that, you need a minimum of three frames with each filter. Unfortunately, due to wind and other issues, I didn't get a full three frames. Okay, so if I hit close now and look, there's my trapezium data. Now, because we have such a wide range of data, we're not gonna be able to stack these adequately in Maxim DL. So what we can do is just do a high option here, which makes the stars more visible in each of the frames. Now, one of the things that's happened here, I recorded the files for the long exposures been two by two, but wanting to keep resolution and minimize exposure time so I don't blow out the trapezium, I recorded the color for the trapezium at one by one. So this image actually has twice the size of the other image twice as many pixels in each axis. So what you have to do to line them up, we need to align them. And because I'm just interested in the color data here, I don't need to go to the higher resolution. But this is the same process you'll do if you're shooting your luminance data bin one by one and your color bin two by two. So we're going to the align box here. We want to select first the RGB. Make sure that's your first frame because that becomes your reference frame. RGB one is our trapezium data, and then you hit okay. You don't just wanna hit add all as it will add it in whichever order they are listed up here. So in this case, you purposefully set your reference frame as the first image. Here we can't do star matching because of the difference in scale. So we actually wanna set this to manual two stars. And the way to do that, you go up to a star in the corner and you hit the left mouse key and you see well that's got to be this star right here click again now we have to go look at a star that's easily obvious in the opposite corner pick something that's relatively bright so we see this diamond shape pick the left star in the diamond now we scroll down and click the left star in the diamond again you want to be as accurate as possible but the software will actually work to correct any errors you have now I hit OK, and what's essentially doing is it rescales the trapezium image. It's a little harder to see here, but if I go back up to the corner, we can see the Orion Nebula down there in the corner, and you can see that the stars actually line up between the two frames. So what I want to do in this case is show one more technique. Now, this can be done before or after stacking, but because the trapezium data is so dark, here, this is the full range to 65,000. Look at how much brighter the image is here from the long exposures. So one trick you can do, go to the process tab and hit stretch, set stretch to gamma, output range to 16 bit. You can leave it at max pixel and you wanna go below one. The lower you go, the more aggressively it will stretch the midtones while leaving the shadows and the highlights pretty much alone. If you hit OK, you can see that it brightened the image significantly without losing the star detail. You can, in fact, run this a second time if your data is deep enough to allow it. Again, in this case, all we're looking for is information to be retained for the trapezium. We're going to adjust the brightness levels once we actually get it into Photoshop. So we save each of these images as 16-bit TIFF. And with that, we are ready to export them over to Photoshop for processing. Well, I hope you learned a lot from this video. 
We've gone through some of the advanced features of Maxim DL, allowing you to take images shot at different scales, sometimes even different instruments, and align the stars to allow you to stack information. Please join me for the next video in Photoshop where we're actually going to show how to mask and process this data for the Orion Nebula. From all of us here at OPT, thanks for watching.